All right, we are go. Live. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to Coffee Regular. Coffee Regular. Today we're keeping our tea regular. Mm -hmm. We are trying some of the Mafuji green tea, which is like looking like a stem green tea, maybe? Maybe. You know that is? I guess. I don't know. No, a leaf. Maybe mm -hmm. it's leaf. Cool. Yeah, it's leaf. Uh, we don't, I don't know, I know nothing about good green teas. Yeah. I've only ever had like a handful of Chinese ones. Yeah, I know, literally nothing. Oh, so. But thank you to the people over at Neo Green Tea in Japan. Yeah, man. They sent us a care package. Mike had some the other day, I think it's pretty good. We're trying yeah. some now. It was dope, man. But yeah, trying the Mafuji today. It's brewed up. We're going to try it um, like straight and yeah. with some, a uh, little bit of lemon. A dash of lemon. So we'll see what happens. <clears throat> but today we're keeping our tea regular. Mm-hmm. There you go. Oh, very well. Done. Splendid. And sometimes a little coffee break is necessary. Mm -hmm. Not a coffee break, but a break from coffee. A break from coffee, yes. Mm. It smells very like herbal and earthy. Yep. And I can second brew this actually. I'll go Ooh, nice. at some point I'll go pour some more water on that. Mm. Mm, tastes like green tea. Mm -hmm. All right, but, uh, that's good. Mm. That tastes really good. Mm -hmm. It's very clean. Yeah, it is. It's very clean. Like, I don't know. You drink like Lipton green tea. I don't know. It just leaves me dry in the mouth and shit. Mm -hmm. This no, is super refreshing. clean, refreshing. Yeah, I'm gonna go um, fill it up a little bit more. For sure. Yeah. Let's keep it going with the solo cast style. Solo cast style. <laughs> I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, so last week, we met with Brandon Terrell, 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 Slice 614, the cheesecake guy. Uh, that episode is live. Go listen to it immediately. Um, yeah, we had just a great time listening to his stories, his background, uh, seeing some of the parallels between martial arts, between our backgrounds and our formative paths and his formative path, you know. It's just nice to kind of draw parallels and connect with people over little things. That was our first interview with a person that we didn't know. Um, or at least, like, wasn't, didn't have some connection. He was just, we kind of reached out. He reached out, you know, very organically, and then we kind of set it all up, and Mike got in contact, back in contact with them, and we set up a date. <clears throat> went in, met him, talked, went to uh, Coffee Connections, met with him, talked to him, great dude. Um, has phenomenal cheesecakes. We had the pistachio cheesecake, and these are like gluten-free, vegan. Uh, they don't have to be, but they most of them are, right? Um, but just the airiness of the cheesecake. Yeah, I have a. My aunt makes a phenomenal cheesecake. She makes it for my dad every year for his birthday. That's my standard of cheesecake. It's a great cheesecake. However. This cheesecake, in terms of my health conscientiousness and stuff like that, with the gluten free and like the walnut crust and stuff like that, really kind of. Mm, uh, the homemade granola crust? Yeah, it was like a homemade granola nut crust. Like, it's just so good. Like, it was. Uh, love, love is an ingredient, and you can't teach that to people. Mm. And he really puts a lot of TLC into those cheesecakes. So, and that's like, I can mm. taste the love in this tea, you can taste the love in that cheesecake. Mm. Um, the second cup should be more lovely. We're gonna let that one steep for a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is a very nice little light flavor too. It is nice. It's, green tea often gives me a stomachache, uh, and this do does not. I don't know. Sometimes, like certain teas, if they steep too long, or especially green tea, was always weird with. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but like legit green tea like this, no, I'm fine. Yeah. Like out of a bag, or just like like, like Americanized. <laughs> yes, yeah. And I always, <laughs> Hate to like, say it, but... <laughs> I just felt weird about it, but. This is the second tea I've had from these guys, and both times, great. Great. I feel awesome. Like, this is what green tea is supposed to be. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, That's the thing. Like, in my <clears throat> brain throughout my life, I'm like, I know I would like green tea if it were legit, and I've just never mm -hmm. had a good green tea. But this is very good, and I like it a lot. So, uh, you've turned us into tea folk. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm secretly a tea guy. You're already well. a tea folk. Yeah. Guys. I drink more tea than I drink coffee. Yeah. I'm sorry I have a confession. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now it's uh, keep your tea regular. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> tea regular. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, before we were hanging out at Coffee Connections, we were talking to Brandon and stuff like that. We were having a conversation just kind of about having good days during bad days, like in training, like yeah. stuff like that. No. Um, but there's, I mean, training is a very like physical, like is very obvious when you have a good day and a bad day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know true. what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's obvious yeah. that your performance wasn't there, it wasn't there, you know, uh, this, that, whatever. But the, well, I guess the parameters of what a good day and bad day are can be really weird. Yeah. That's what what we were talking about is um, I had really gone to judo that morning and felt like crap. And in my head, like, even as we were warming up, I'm like, I'm not going to do anything today. And we started out, we were just sort of running around, and Etienne kept putting stuff for us to, like, jump and fl jump and dive over and stuff. And so first I'm jumping over a mat, and I'm like, I'm not going to jump over that mat. I jumped over the mat. Uh, I can't do it again. I just did it again. Did it again. Then he put one up a little higher, about four and a half feet, so he would dive roll over it. I'm like, oh, I can't do that today. And I just went and did it. And by, like, the fifth time, I almost front flipped over the darn thing. Yeah, see? Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, we're going through class. I'm kind of thinking like that the whole time. Like, I feel like crap. I can't do it. And then I just do it really well. And then at the end, we climb the rope. And the rope's like 30 feet. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is going to be really hard today. And I climb the rope, and I'm about, I don't know, 75% of it. And I'm like, that was, it's easy. Mm -hmm. I should practice wrapping my foot around the rope <laughs> just so I can use and my legs a little bit. And I did that, and I grabbed the rafter, and I came back down and was like, eh. Hey. Hey. But yeah, you kind of had a similar experience like the day before, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I've actually had a few of those recently, like, I mean, kicking up with, like, handstands, and I was, like, walking on my hands randomly, and just, like, <laughs> like whoa! Yeah, just, like, stuff that I did <clears throat> previously, and that was a challenge, and that, like, I need to revisit, mm -hmm. since I've done a lot of different weird rewiring and, like, different yeah. things, like, yeah. the, like, those are things that I need to, like, revisit and, like, reattach and, like, just kind of replay yeah. with. Yeah, you know? reestablish your limitations on that Yeah. One. Like, but then, yeah, establish new ones. You yeah. know, you have your old ones aren't the same limitations, mm -hmm. right? So you establish new limitations and you shatter those and blah blah blah. Yeah, and you know, hopefully I can walk yeah. up hands, like walk upstairs on my hands soon. That's my goal. I have a friend that can do that. Um, when I was in college, I had a buddy who could do clap push ups on his hands yeah. upstairs. Yeah, that's what, yeah, there's a dude at my high school who could do some shit like that. It was crazy. He was like a yeah. diver, I think, uh, but just phenomenal upper body strength and stability. Yuri he was a Russian, um physics major mm. <laughs> so Sweet. he was wicked smart and wicked uh, smart. but we did capoeira together and he was just super obsessed with capoeira so yeah he was the guy that's always an interesting thing to me is like when someone gets super deep into like another martial art you know what i mean mm -hmm. like or like they're just as into that martial art as you are into yours and then, like, yeah. some of the parallels and then also you're kind of like well like why aren't they doing this one or like why aren't they doing that one you know what i mean like uh, yeah, yeah. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu nowadays has been tested and very, you know, true to what it's... Well, I guess it's re reasons why you're deep in it. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't necessarily have to be realistic. Sure. And just fun. Like, for me, Capoeira was fun. We did Heijin Ao style, just like breakdance fighting. Mm -hmm. But it was a break from competition. Well, yeah. It was a break from, like, just getting hit. And you know, it's and still in the neighborhood. But it was in the neighborhood of awesomeness because it was Capoeira as breakdance mm -hmm. fighting. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Yeah, so it's just, just it's sweet. just it's just cool. You know, it was super fun. It was a great group. You know, we had a barambolo and drums when we played, sang the songs, yeah. and did all the stuff, and it was a great time. Yeah, yeah, but it was a wonderful break. Yeah, in my train in my training week, for something that was serious in one way, but not in another. Yeah, you know, so. That's why I don't, I don't judge people's obsession with whatever martial art they're in, whether or not it's... I prefer it to be realistically effective. That'd be cool. But I also like to do, like, cartwheel kicks on people, yeah. too, because yeah. why not look cool? There's um, always... It's yeah. just fun. There's always that parallel in my head. It's almost <laughs> like a triple thing. It's like, this will work in, like, the street, this will work in a competition, this will work in a movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, and, like, look, you gotta play with the movie shit sometimes, too. You gotta it's do fun. The movie shit. It keeps it fun, man. Yeah. Because, I mean, you get to a certain level of training and stuff, like, you almost have to fuck around and, like, do you your shit. You with it, otherwise, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it's what the, like, what's the point? Otherwise, you just get kind of, you can get weird, too. Yeah. If you're, like, too real all the time. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about it, like, why did I do this? Yeah. Like, why have I chosen this, this path, doing whatever? It's like, I never grew up. How'd you fall into it, yeah. I never grew up. I just wanted to be a ninja, cowboy, fucking, you know. Pretty much. And that's just what I formed my life. <laughs> I was like, I was like, 
instead of growing up and getting a job and doing this shit, I was like, nah, I'm going to stay and do this forever. <laughs> Keeping on that path. Yeah. Oh, me too. Yeah, same um, thing. <laughs> and, like, and I was just kind of reflecting. So looking back, like years and years went by where like, that was a super uncomfortable feeling. And yeah. now it's gotten to the part where I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I self identify. Like, finally, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just As like, an finally, indie cowboy, yes. Fucking. <laughs> well, even just like, I'm cool with it. Like, I used to be very, like, weird about it, you know? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even, like, tell people what I did, you know? Oh, no. Yeah. I, yeah, I was like that for a long time. And I'm still like that to a point. I, I don't even to, know what to say when people tell me. I'm like, I, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I do. I, I have to, like, rein myself in a little bit. I get a little yeah. too excited. But. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also like I also couldn't. Ex it's hard for me to like explain to you in words. <laughs> I'd rather just show you and have you like shadow me for a day. Be like this is what I do. This is what I do. Follow me for today. Yeah. No, that is a. Uh, I think yeah, with something we both have in common, mm -hmm. we sort of a chose that path, but b also have a day to day life that's hard to explain mm -hmm. in words. Yeah. 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 Oh. It's hard to explain like my schedule with people sometimes like. Well, you know, just because like shit fluctuates, and you, that's how like training life is. That's just the life. Yeah, I've lived it. I know like, what's going on. That's, all, that's <laughs> like, kind of a funny thing as I've gotten older. It's like people who understand like scheduling plates. That I'm like, oh yeah, he, he gets a schedule. You know what I mean? Like then you yeah. work with someone who doesn't have a, a play like that. They never have. They're kind of like inflexible. Yeah. You know. And they don't. They don't understand. They can't they, be. They're dug in too hard. Yeah. They think like, that everyone can just be this. This is your day. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes that is. But <laughs> I, know, I just think it's. But on top of that too, like I just always. I don't know, like. I just didn't see myself like getting a job in corporate America doing that whole fucking thing. Like mm -hmm. I knew, and like even thinking about it now it makes me anxious. Yeah, like, early on, I, early on, I figured that out. I've, I've tried two office-ish <clears throat> jobs in my life, just summer jobs. I worked at a bank one summer. Because uh, a kid I taught Taekwondo, his mom was like president of a local bank. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, you want to open accounts this summer? I'm like, sure. sure. She's like, you got a nice shirt? I'm like, yeah, I got nice clothes, don't worry. And I, you know, I did the bank thing um, well, one summer, which was fun. Mm -hmm. It was cool to, you know, have to like put hair product in and like wear a button up shirt. That's the thing, you did uh, that. You did yeah, that. Yeah, I did part. that. <laughs> and you yeah. checked it off the list. Checked it like, off the I list. Liked it. Yeah, you know. And then what was mm -hmm. the other? I did another thing too. I can't remember. Another office kind of thing. The bank one always stuck out, but um, yeah, you know, I tried it, and I was like, "This is fun because I know it's temporary. Mm -hmm. I can't live like this." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like each job of mine, or each occupation, or whatever you want to call it, each time waster until I got to now. Like, <laughs> each, yeah, like, so so each societal thing, each societal title that each I had. Societal hold. experiment. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Uh, but I just knew it was always just like a timeline. It was like a timetable in terms of like, this is over soon. <laughs> yeah. This is not, yeah. this is not permanent. Yeah. This is a puddle jumper, you know, the, the, uh, you're jumping across well, the lily pad. Put, like, you got to put it in like a comic book term of, you know, Bruce Wayne studied with a lot of different people and had a lot of different jobs, including various criminal jobs when he was training to be Batman. Because you just need to know what it was like. You got to touch. You had to, he had to touch. You had to touch all his bases. You need to figure out motivation behind criminal acts on many levels. He had to learn how to be an escape artist. He had to learn how to be a freaking physicist. He had to read about that. Though. He can't. Yeah, he, can't, he had to go do it. And that's how I always treated it. Yeah. That was, yeah. That was you know, even within, like, cool part about growing up in a college town is you can sort of bring the world to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I kind of did that, you know, but that was how I always looked at it. It was how I prepared. <laughs> Naturally. Now I'm there. Now I'm, I'm full on, you know, full blown superhero. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like you look back. It's like a, tr it's a fucking training montage. It's just a long. It is. It's your training montage. Yeah, it's just a long yeah. stream training montage. Just like that's life. Like training montage, train, rest. Want to mm -hmm. go do the thing? That's mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's life, man. It was how it works. <clears throat> and like I ate a lot of shit on the front end, you know, like just. Always being in the gym, always in this when I was young, but mm. now it's like starting to pay off. And like now I'm like, oh. <coughs> well, you look back at all of the shit we talk about and you're like, yeah, yeah it worked. <laughs> That's part of it. Yeah. That's cool. Like that was, um, whether you think of it as like synchronicitous or not or whatever, like well, you know, it's, there's so many weird things. Or did so. you just stick with it long enough for it to pan out? That's what I that's what I'm like. Because it doesn't work out for most people. Yeah. That's what I'm like in my brain. I'm like, you had to have had 
certain right choices and certain things had to happen to put you in there. Yeah. You know what I But mean? then you also had to stick with some shit long enough yeah. for it to become good. To see through to the other side. Yeah. But at the same time, that's, that what isn't so much like the universe helping me out as much as just sticking to the fucking thing and sticking doing the it. Fucking thing, and then the universe helps you. <laughs> and then it's like, yeah, it's like, back end, yeah. you pay your dues and the universe is like, oh, cool, here you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's a, that's an here's interesting a, dynamic. But, a breadcrumb. <laughs> yeah, but I don't like, that's a funny element to relate to like feeling crappy and having a good training day mm-hmm. of, I don't know, like when I was in judo last week, that, was kind of the montage. I wasn't directly thinking about it, but I was actively like thinking I couldn't do anything and then did everything. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, yeah. I've been there. I'm like, I can turn off my, I can, you know, self one, self two, if we're talking in that respect, I can turn off self one and just let it happen. I'm like, I know I know how to do it. I know mm-hmm. I can do it. Even if I don't feel like I can, just, you know, remove the barrier and, yeah. you know, find out where you're actually at today. And yeah. Oftentimes, you will discover that you're really not that bad today. <laughs> you know, you could a, you could be better. Self one, at least my thing, self one is very much just like a bully. You know, just like you know what, you're fucking this that. Like that was just like my negative self talk. Yeah. Like, turn off self one. Self two takes over. Fucking chill and doing whatever. Yeah, and you don't even talk. Like self two doesn't talk. Self two just does. It is. Yeah. It and is just, the motion. Just, it is the action. <laughs> yeah, and it's just nice. You just kind of do it, and then. Like, you're continually surprised if you're yeah. having a bad day, like, oh, well, exactly. man. <laughs> you know, you know, I found, like, ways, like, to kind of grow up and be, like, to tell self one, shut the fuck up, yeah. you know, and kind of confront that part of me, you know, uh. and sit down, because, like, that's the part that's getting in my way. That's what people say, or mean, when they say, like, unfuck yourself, and, like, do all this, they, it's very popular terminology these days, but, like, Turn off your inner that's what they're right? talking about, uh. is... <laughs> the negative self-talk you're your own worst enemy the enemies in the mirror type shit like mm-hmm. that's what it is <laughs> it's just that negative self-talk that pops up like yeah. you know randy katori used to talk about how uh he had to make peace with it mm-hmm. and like chael sonnen talks about talking to randy katori about that a lot actually uh randy said he decided that he could never get rid of it so he just accepted that it existed mm-hmm. and he made friends with the worst outcome mm-hmm. and in that case the worst outcome being losing or getting hurt really bad and losing and he's like, I just had to be okay with it. It yeah. wasn't going away. Yep. And it's just there and you just accept that it exists yeah. and you move on. Well, like yeah. in my head, I built up all this stuff in my head. Like if I lost, this would happen. This mm-hmm. would happen. None yeah. of that happens. Yeah. None of it actually, none none of it actually happens. <laughs> Maybe you get hurt sometimes. Yeah. Like, that was the biggest thing. Was yeah. Like, but uh, I made, that was the first step to me accepting it. Cause like, you're getting hurt. You're hurting yourself. This it's not good mentally, physically, this mm-hmm. and that. Like you gotta sh- like switch that. Yeah, you, you need know? to switch it because like not only are you hurting yourself <laughs> like, emotionally, but physically it leads to more injuries. Yeah. If you go in convincing yourself of doubt, where well, your ego wants to be right. Dude, I can I can so, take a specific training session where my ribs popped, and I was like, my ribs are gonna pop today, and this is when it's gonna happen. happen. And it did, and I was like, fuck. <laughs> Damn it. And, and that's what I get for putting it out in the universe like that. But like, yeah, thinking of it that way, like you know, if you. Like your ego wants to be correct. Mm-hmm. Self one w- wants to be right. So oh, yeah. you sabotage yourself to be right. Yeah, exactly. You know? And that's almost really what it was. Like, just, you know, a self repeating cycle, like self sabotage. Because they just be like, you're hurt, train through it, push harder. Mm-hmm. You know, like, no. like that's not the excuse. It's just not well rounded. <laughs> no, yeah, the, the mindset was off. Whereas now the mindset isn't. Of you can do, I can do the exact same thing. I don't feel good. I'm hurt. Train anyway. But what's the difference? What's the switch? Like I've been like I can't put my finger on it, but I know that I'm. I'm like yeah. I'm like on the surface. I'm approaching it the same way, but I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's because in my head I used to be like willing to die every second of the day, and now I'm like I'm not gonna die for this shit. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Me too. I'm not. Yeah. I'm willing to tap and take that L and smile. Be done with it. I'm yeah. not willing to fucking crack my skull open and do this shit anymore. Like just for the hell of it. Yeah. You know. Like, yeah. It's not. That's not honor anymore. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Honor to me now uh, is living to fight another day. Mm-hmm. You know, living to fight that. You know, finish the training session. Without, yeah. You know, with being able to breathe and you know move. <laughs> yeah. And like I understand that. And I understand that you have to push like that. But there are parameters within 
you can actually push to make it without getting diminished returns and fucking yourself up. And like, there's a window. Yeah, it can't be always diminishing returns. Yeah. It can't be always push will to die every second. You can every day. You need to test your limits, but but not all the time. Yeah, you can't. You can't. <laughs> you can't. It's not. Uh, UFC guys don't fight <coughs> every single day. They, they don't have the fight. These every days they day. mostly don't I mean, spar at all. Yeah, before a fight. Yeah. Donald Cerrone's kind of become famous for like I sparred twice in this camp. And, he, and that's probably Drilling a total dads, of, like of 15 minutes tops. Yeah, but look at him. And look, yeah, he's great now. Because of the, the macro process yes. of him, the way he's just constantly he's still fighting. Around. He's still great. Thing. Yeah, but he knows, like, I'm going to get beat up in the fight. Yeah. Why well, get beat well, up that, in training? He's, what, 36 now? He's you know, mm-hmm. He knows. He's like, I mean, He's right. been around forever now, though. Like, I was watching him in 06 in WEC. Yeah. And he'd been around in MMA for a while back then. Oh, that's my favorite. He was a he's then, days. and he's a fucking legend now. Like, yeah. And it's almost like, damn, it's about time we got his payday, you know what I mean? Like, real Seriously. payday. Like, yeah. <laughs> but <clears throat> Donald Cerrone is an example of a guy who did the right thing with his money. Yeah. Of, uh, Cerrone and uh, Connor are really good contrasts in that. Uh, Cerrone made money slower. Okay, I'll give Connor that. Having a millions of dollars tossed to you once messes with your head and mm-hmm. your crazy shit. But his focus was always, I just want to play. Mm-hmm. I want it to be in-house. He got the ranch. On the ranch, he can do everything he wants. Yeah, he has, a, he has a paintball course. He has the he yeah. eats off of it. He has his it, meat and his veggies yeah, there. But that was always his plan. Yeah, it was yeah. just and you know on the surface it was like always buying a bunch of toys. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that's cool. But also he eats off of it. He lives off of it. His that's family is there. Right? He has a school there now. He does a summer. He does summer camps there. It's, that was always the plan. Yeah, to create his own not like society but his ideal environment. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's why it never got away from him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he like really kind of put himself on the map to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, like the way, the best way. And that was always, like he never did, he didn't go about titles or anything. That was just, this is my purpose. I can make a lot of money fighting. I enjoy fighting and I can create this life. Yeah. That's what I think about what I've always liked and respect about him, obviously. He's like, he's like, I'll fight him. Yeah. I'll just fight anyone. Like, he'd be like, today. Uh, today. And he okay. would do it and probably win. Yeah. There's not many people like that anymore that would do that. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? No, I mean, even... Even... Like, even in... in I bet my generation. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's still not a lot of people. No. Even then. That's the scariest shit imaginable. Like, yeah, let's do it now. I personally <laughs> love that. I'd, I'd rather do it. that than be like, I, let's I do it pre- now. Let's do it. Fuck it. Let's do it. I prefer <laughs> the spontaneous fight over the, like... Three months Three out, months like. <laughs> I'd be like, just call me 20 minutes before. Dude, that's how I wish you could do super fights where I'd just be like, yeah, just call me and I'll show up. <laughs> yeah, just call me the day of. That's how I always did the best. Anytime in competition, when I wasn't actually going to be competing, I just ended up competing and then yeah. I'd crush everybody. Yeah. Because you're, like, you I, well, put that flow on it. Just put the flow on it. Yeah. Self one didn't have time to mess with me back then. You know, yeah. now I know that. So I can kind of treat everything that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. All right. So. That's good. Are you ready for a little lemon? Yeah. All right. Throw it on me. Throw it on me. You want to put a little lemon in? Yeah, I'll throw a splash of lemon in there. Okay. See how that is. I can already taste a little bit kind of herbally lemony in this in it, so I can complement it well. I don't know shit about tea, but you know. I don't know much about green tea. I figured you figure I would, being like as obsessed with Korea and China right. as I am, but yeah, green tea's never been much of my thing. But it's nice with lemon. Mm-hmm. This would be real good. You got like sore throat. Oh um, yeah, it brings out a little bit. Like the citron is like yeah. definitely. But it kind of like rounds out the mouth feel a little bit. Like you kind of like mm-hmm. a little more like it takes bite like, on it. Yeah, it, yeah. It's something about it has yeah, the citrusy like, bite and it brings out the earthiness. Yeah, it kind of tones down the umami at the end. Oh yeah. Fuck yeah. Mm. Tea's good. Neo, you've turned us into tea people. Turned me into tea people. Yeah. Mike was already tea people. But. Yeah. But I'm back on the green tea. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> this is good, good stuff. Uh, what was your favorite part from the slice and reveal? Oh, dude. Um, other than the life-altering, reality-changing cheesecake, mm-hmm. um, Brandon himself was just an interesting guy. He was very um, like friendly. Mm-hmm. Like to look in his eyes. 
he made he made sure to make eye contact. Mm -hmm. He's just a warm guy, yeah. really warm guy, and genuinely interested. Like when he interviewed us, mm -hmm. I thought yeah. that was like surprising and cool. And I kind of felt like I talked a little too much. He got me going on a story, but um, we were talking until we did. Yeah, but uh, like that was like that was cool. And then like no, personally, like when he asked me about being a stay-at-home dad, mm -hmm. like, that was really like touching. Yeah, it's a thoughtful most, question. Most people don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let alone in general, let alone. No, not many people know like we talked about a little bit like not mm -hmm. many people know them so mm -hmm. it's good to get so, a perspective out there yeah, that was neat but yeah he's just a really like caring dude yeah like usually or at least in other podcasts that I've seen stuff like that you get someone on who has a product or a business they want to talk about that, that is that's great product. and we did want to know about that absolutely but like they would just harp on it he was very much just two way street two way conversation mm -hmm. so it was almost secondary though yeah the cheesecake yeah. itself was almost secondary see that's what I like about the process our, our yeah. format yeah. is like it isn't about one particular thing it's, it's about just, the experience it's about chat, that yeah. the, yeah. the cast the coffee the cake Ooh. whatever like that and the hot tongs, man. Dude, yeah, when he said that, the oh. parallel, I was like, oh, sure. Oh, he showed us the scar. And yeah, I was like, I was damn, like, bro. All right, man. Hot tongs. <laughs> You're tough. The, I've never the, been hit with anything on fire. That's the equivalent of, like, you know, the belt or the sword across the knuckles or back or whatever. Something, man. Yeah, jeez. But that was, uh, that brought it all together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, especially, like, when you started <clears throat> talking about hardships like that and just kind of paying your dues up, up on that front mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that, that was, was cool yeah. whenever, see like I just need that moment with someone yeah to be like fuck yeah they're my people you yeah, know? <laughs> yeah they, it was on because to see then then there was like all the parallels with the stories yeah you know like he trained yeah he had his training montage yeah, yeah it was there and I'm sure like you look back in your head like it almost part plays like that too mm -hmm. it's like oh you remember the fucking that whatever no. carrying just, the grapes yeah badass, yeah, yeah. Like that's nuts, <coughs> but yeah, but yeah, it's like and it's just nice to learn like other people's backgrounds. You know, like he wasn't mm -hmm. always the cheesecake guy. You know, he no, yeah, he kind of worked in a vineyard that. and kind of grew into like some wine stuff and then branched out. And, yeah, and I think it's really no, really it, cool. it's cool to kind of hear the journey to get to the point where you meet someone. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, like I don't know. I mean, we don't have like a physical place to go to or like a physical thing to give people Not like true. a cake yeah. or something like that yeah you could we just have our stories yeah we just have our stories <laughs> and our words but um, I just thought it was interesting to hear the hardships and what it took to get from A to that yeah from A to that I, I just had no idea so yeah you have no like you have no clue that I, like I don't in my head like yeah, I think about a bad day training like what's a bad day training over there like what's a bad day what's a bad cheesecake what's a bad 614 slice day you know what I mean yeah like, bad, bad slice day bad slice you day do you eat the bad cheesecake yeah and that to me that may be worse than you know having the bad training day. right yeah <laughs> eat um, the bad food yeah uh, okay. <laughs> But I'm just, I know it's just any other industry or business or any other thing is just going to present its own set of challenges and like mm -hmm. ways to do things. So mm -hmm. it's just nice to see I, someone else. Someone else's yeah. yeah, to see it sort of fit into a very similar pattern, though. In a way, it was some of the same steps. Yeah. So oh, some, some of the same challenges just presented in a different way, but conceptually very similar yeah which is i like i like that parallels with things when you can kind of find the same same in everybody absolutely and like yeah you're right like because uh, if you think about it, like all our face kick friends are just like uh, another it's like triangle right instead of just bouncing back and forth it gives that yeah, third it gives point a, yeah it gives to a cool. go around mm -hmm. um and like you and i have very similar experiences so like you know, we can, get, with, without even saying certain things, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, that yeah, thing. we get it." Yeah, so yeah. So to have someone else in a different, you don't almost background. have to explain that yeah. to them is neat, and then they yeah. can kind of explain their thing we don't understand to us. And yeah. that's, a, that's a very cool dynamic. Yeah, um, and like, like, yeah, and like, we've, like even up to now, we've only had martial artists like mm -hmm. on to talk about. So like, even then, yeah. even if we don't know them, we're talking to them like we were in the same <clears throat> shop. Speak. We're all, yeah, we're on the same sort of same, same sort of realm. Mm -hmm. But like. The only thing I've done, like, I worked in the kitchen for a couple of years, and I was a busser and shit like that, and, like, I never right. cooked or anything, so, like, um, mm -hmm. but just to hear the, from A to B to C to in between, all that shit yeah. is cool. Like, it's very cool. It's awesome. Mad respect. Brandon, thank you. It's a good mm -hmm. time. I appreciate Phenomenal it. Phenomenal cheesecakes. Check them out. I ordered one. Good. 
Yeah. Good. What did you get? Pistachio? Yeah, the other one we had. Yeah, because yeah, I gave that piece to my wife. Where she's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. The funny part is she doesn't even like she doesn't even like cheesecake. Oh, okay. I just gave it to her and I was like, it's gluten free and vegan. And then she's like, fuck yeah. And she ate it. She's like, what is this? Oh my god. She's like, I want this for Valentine's Day and my birthday. Like, I was Dumb. like, and it's cheesecake. She's like, seriously? I said, wow. This is like, she's like, I don't like cheesecake and this is amazing. <laughs> so. so. Yeah, I mean, so. if you don't like cheesecake, go you're over gonna, there, yeah, try, try it, some, yeah. and you're going to probably like it. <laughs> it's not what you think in yeah. the best possible way. And that's the thing. I know he has a lot of flavors and things that's like hard to get away from the pistachio because that was fucking good. I know, that, that was, was so good. It. And to think of that as like, in comparison to say the, um, like the cookie crumble one. Yeah. Like, that's such different flavor. Yeah. Like, so like, it's yeah. a funny thing because like... Mm. My shit, my tastes have changed since I've gotten older. Yep. I used to fucking just annihilate chocolate when I was a kid. Like, yep. I was just like, oh, chocolate? Yeah. Now yep. I'm like getting into like the more savory, like walnut, honey, and like yeah, different yeah, yeah. types of like earthier sweetness type things like that. Yeah, it makes like, it matching more. Like baklava is like my. my oh, God. God. Like, mm. uh, I would beat up a lot of people for baklava. There's this place in Detroit. I'm going there in April. Uh, it's called Shatila Bakery. Yeah. Phenomenal. Cool. Fucking baklava. And just French and, and Middle Eastern desserts. But Oh, French and Middle Eastern? Yeah, it's a beautiful... It's like two of the best dessert cultures there mm-hmm. are. Yep, yeah. and they have a beautiful bakery, and it looks pristine. There's like... Uh, they have like a sugar cane juice bar, and like a fucking... Like all these <laughs> intricate French desserts. <coughs> baklava, all, all variety, but just so fresh and great. Mm. So if you're ever in Detroit, go there. I'm going up there. I'm gonna get the biggest thing of baklava I can. They make it in like slabs, you know. Make weight. Eat. <laughs> go. I'm gonna get a fucking <laughs> pallet of baklava. Um, but that's like uh, just sort of like the the uh, I don't know how to describe them. Just not as sweet or like chocolate, chocolate vanilla, you know. Mm, the more in between. Honey. Yeah, so honey, cinnamon, just, yeah, nuts. Um, mm-hmm. Honey with the pastry. Flakiness, yeah, and then add the nuts to it, it tones it down. Yeah, oh. I, now I appreciate more of like a broader flavor profile as opposed to like, like chocolate assault on my face, oh, <laughs> like, fuck oh. me up. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that and like just being more health conscious, the gluten free vegan aspect. Like, I'm not gluten free or vegan, but the fact, mm, but the fact that it is, 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 yeah, it doesn't knock it, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it's it it's hurt good, it at all. And it, it's an easier recovery. Yeah. You could, you could binge on that a little bit and I could eat a piece of that like and drain shit. probably. Yeah. I could eat a piece of that after like a sandwich and go train still and, and, be, feel, fine. and be fine. Yeah. You wouldn't I eat like a piece of like or... fucking yeah. real, you know, that thick cheesecake will put me down for a while. Yeah. You'd be take done. a nap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You'd be down for a little bit. The lemon is nice with the tea, though. Isn't it? Yeah. Mm. I need to remember to not use all of the sample pack. Mm. Because I'm trying to get my wife on green tea. Yeah. So I need to be a little more careful with that. Because it seems to really just be enough for a pulp. Right. So, um... We have... you have one of those little, like, thingies? I do. One of the little, like, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, tea ball. Or just the, yeah, I mean, we can, I have various ways we can do this, Naturally. but I just like the, the glass teapot, which we should take a picture of, actually, with the tea in it, do the thing. <laughs> Live air. Live air, social media. Yeah, there you go. Um, nice. Get up this angle. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, but even just like drawing the parallels to podcasting, like mm-hmm. we had a very long time period where we were kind of like totally just underground, like a thousand percent. Nobody would you know have heard yeah. of us now or something. Like, we're like, oh yeah, this that. You know, it's yeah, like we're it's peaking up a little bit yeah, here and there. We're, yeah. we're starting to get a little um, more well known. Just like just I mean people hooking us up with these awesome teas and coffees and stuff like that. It's just mm-hmm. like nice to kind of gain a little traction that way. Yeah. Uh, like I asked him, like, I'm sure you had some like hardships and stuff, times you wanted to fucking quit and stuff like this. Like yeah. we've experienced that with this, like not like we're like 
they were hands up and quit. It's never been like that, but like, yeah, but like, should we? Like, well, like, is this just a fun thing? Is anyone ever gonna do it, or is it just us talking? Yeah, yeah. But like, yeah. I think we both reached that point where we're like, fuck yeah, like, yeah, this is yeah. possible. Yeah, <laughs> well, like, not even just possible, but like, yeah, it's good. It's like, it's, mm -hmm. it's not just there. It's positive, yeah. like the way we we're trying to mean it to be. I think it's positive. After and also Brandon's compliments on like keep doing what you're doing. It's yeah. important. You're unique. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it was cool to, to to see an outside perspective from a person we didn't know. Yeah. So it's that, e I mean this God cool. love our friends, but they're yeah. like, Oh love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're always gonna be supportive. Or you know, Jason would be like fucking stupid podcast. He'd just give me shit. Yeah, he'd just him. give me shit. That's him. But he listens. Fuck you, Jason. But he's, he's listening. Yeah, he's listening. listening. So, you're yeah. listening. You hear me? You hear me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Rewind it. Rewind it. Listen to it again. Uh, but uh, just to hear, yeah, totally, again, even someone outside of martial arts, outside. Yeah, just completely like, yeah, outside of our realm. But yeah. also to compliment it and be like, people aren't doing BJJ coffee or like Taekwondo. People aren't talking Which, about that sort of thing. Or even if they are, it's not like massive. Which is funny because um, outside perspective or sci-fi perspective, coffee's always gone with training. Mm -hmm. In my head, I'm like, really? Because yeah. I've always yeah. had coffee and taekwondo and jujitsu yeah. and everything. Coffee's always gone with it. It's always been synonymous. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, it's not? Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah. There's always like, that's another funny example of just like martial arts looking out in the real world and being like, what the fuck do other re real people do? Like, yeah. what do regular do, people do, do? Do they do this? Yeah, I don't exactly. Know. <laughs> like, is this a part of other people's lives? Like, I'm like a fucking psycho. <laughs> yeah. And does everyone have like an assortment of ace bandages? Yeah. Of different types? No one? Nobody? What, what do you mean? <laughs> you haven't broken every bone in your body? Darn. You don't know how to tape that by <laughs> yourself? Seriously? Why Dude, not? That's the funny thing. <laughs> Even recently people have been like, oh, this hurts, that hurts. I'm like, come here. Come here, I got a guys, couple things for you. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> been there, done that. How'd you learn this? You don't know. Mike, Mike, Mike fucked me up. <laughs> Fuck me, made me cry, so... It's okay, it works. It's good, yeah. I'll cry so you don't have to. I already cried. Someone made me cry, so I learned it. Exactly. <laughs> um, whether it's... I don't know, it's just like the little things, you know, they start to add up. Mm -hmm. Whether it's like little compliments, even just comments on the, on the, the podcast, or even like, say, like, your jujitsu game, like, hey, like, nice grip, you know, like, nice thing. That only pushes stuff forward. True. It, yeah. it doesn't hurt anything, and it only pushes it forward. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not so you're like trying to be a dick and like, like, oh yeah, that was a great fucking grip. And then you know, like you're well, fucking with them. But like, it just depends on the person. Yeah. Sometimes that does push things forward. So it's a good relationship. Sure. That's that's a sort of sibling type of yeah. relationship. And yeah. there should be some semblance of that somewhere, I think. But yeah. uh, when there's just a genuine push for like. Like, uh, appreciation for something with uh, like unprompted appreciation, mm -hmm. you know, something like that is, is that's um, uh, like it's like it's almost like shocking. You're like, oh, oh yeah, wow, it's, you really? It's like thing, you know? Yeah, like, it's like shocking and get very reaffirming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also I don't want to be like, what? Like really? Like we're cool? Like, <laughs> like dude, okay. Yeah, like oh sweet, like uh, so. It's just it's nice to have that outside perspective as well. Yeah, definitely, and to make a new friend. Yeah, which was like, very cool. Absolutely, especially outside of the realm of um, like face punching and whatnot. Yeah, which is not a not a thing I personally get to do often. Make friends with people that aren't in my in my sort of you know circle. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, jujitsu. It's like very easy to like, or not necessarily easy, but like easier to be like, oh yeah, they do jujitsu. That's the ground. Like that's you, you know, like you got a base to that. jump off of. Yeah, you got a, yeah. a good reference point. It's you know. And that was like something I like reflected on like the past year. I was like, you haven't like made new connections with people, you know, like you haven't like made new friends, like you've maintained relationships and like rekindled some like that's great too, but or any or the connections you've made have been completely within Yeah. What you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You're right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and it's like you, you almost want something outside of that. Yeah. So like it was nice to just be able to Yeah, to kind of go outside well, like, of that. Just I think for me, like, it's just kind of dawning on me, like, a pod, like, having a podcast and, like, being able to, like, this is a thing that I have to, like, offer, I guess, that we can talk, like, not just be like, hey, can I talk to you? Like, do you want to be my friend, like, at a yeah. coffee shop, you know, like, kind, there's, like, a buffer, like, I have gummy bears in my pocket, they're warm. 
<laughs> yeah. Like just granted in my head, like the little kid in me like would do that, but the adult I in my brain wouldn't, so Yeah. This it's the adult that I'm talking to. This yeah. doesn't also have the isn't also a little kid that wouldn't respond to Yeah, that. exactly. That's the problem. <laughs> exactly. So <clears throat> just having something to be not to oh, I don't want to say like offer, but just have something there it's to come to the starter. Yeah. Yeah, you know. We're just shooting the shit. There's like, a way in. And if you, I mean, and I think, you know, like most people have something to say. Like some it, type of thing to say uh, that they would want other people to hear. Mm -hmm. um, and just, I they don't I, always have that chance. Yeah, because that chance, to, it, it's hard to have it exist outside of anger sometimes. And social media anymore. And social media. <laughs> people get pissed off and then they go off. Mm -hmm. People get pent up and they go off. Or they just sort of word vomit because they haven't talked to anyone for a long yep. time. And then it's social media where you just type in some crap down yeah. and it's not real. And that's like a and weird so, diary entry to the world and like that's a which whole Which that's just strange. Yeah. I'm not into that personally. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the, yeah. The podcast, I know for us personally, is just a cool way to talk to each other. Yeah. But then also, after hearing, you know, from last week, of we're sort of talking to others as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Like, for instance, like, Brooke and I were having coffee. Like, I met someone that I had, like, an Iceland shirt on. He's like, oh, what's that shirt? Um, He's like, we exchanged mm -hmm. uh, info or whatever. And, like, uh, you know, uh, but... And in my head, I'm like, what would I say to, like, reach out to him, you know, and, like, oh, like, like, I could just be like, yeah, we want to have coffee, whatever, like, that'd be great, but then what, like, what would the, you know, the yeah, end what? game be, or, like, what would, you know, uh, and just in terms of, like, not, like, business, but, like, what are we doing, you know? What are you hanging out with? Yeah, like, what the fuck are we getting at? Yeah. Um, but just to have, like, hey, you want to come on the podcast, you know, like, yeah, this, like, yeah, something like that is, like, just a really good mm -hmm. uh, icebreaker, or even just, like, a... Let's get further into this kind of thing. Yeah, like, the podcast has changed for us. It's be, it's moved from pompous to a, a conversation starter mm -hmm. almost. Of now we're not embarrassed to have it. Right. Whereas yeah. we kind of spent the past year being a little bit embarrassed to have it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. to promote it's, it and whatnot. And now it's just it's a cool thing. Yeah. We're not being pompous. We're just saying, hey, you know, we got this thing. Come on. Yeah. 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 I and mean, it's just like anymore people. Will, or a way that I, it just kind of relates back to like everyone has something to say and like the, everyone's used to having an outlet to say it mm -hmm. so like Twitter or Facebook or whatever like this puts back the humanity in it yeah. it puts us face to face so they can't be like fuck this guy blah, blah, blah. Yeah. and they'd be like oh wait no I'm just and kidding you know, it gives you time to <clears throat> time to think about your words but also time not to yeah and you, so have to, yeah, you have exactly. to sort of <clears throat> real time pause god forbid you have a conversation with somebody yeah <laughs> have an actual conversation where you have to be cognizant of what you're saying and thoughtful mm -hmm. as you're doing it. Yeah. You can't like rewrite it five times. Mm -hmm. you know, be like, oh yeah, yep. I gotcha. No, as you're going, it can develop. Yeah. And, and yeah, I, I made a post a long time ago, like podcasting is like a new form of social media, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but it still has the human touch of conversation. It has a you can hear interacting. People's voice and, yeah, you can actually tone a voice. And, and you, like and someone listening to this could like cue up on things from our conversation. Like mm -hmm. they could mm -hmm. tell what was going on from our conversation. You can't get that from a transcribed no, you can't get text. Or yeah. uh, I'm not to say you can't get stuff out of that, but like it's oh, just it's, it's a lot easier to put your own stamp on it. Yeah. Uh, your own mood is going on to what you're reading so you get what you expect out of it. Yeah. Whereas this, it's a little harder to do that. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Well, I mean, we're talking, like, from, like, ground zero to where we are. Think about, like, from radio down. Like, no, yeah. we don't have to listen to anyone telling us to say anything. Like, you know what I mean? No, like, we no, don't have to be like, you can't say that, I can't say this, can't blah, blah, blah. It's like... Which, it's, you know, we're in a really cool mid-ground where we have yeah. kind of all the control. Yeah. We're very free. <clears throat> yeah. Have someone breathing down our necks being like, oh, I can't say fuck. I'd be fucked. <laughs> We'd be fucked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, podcast dead. <laughs> oh, dang. Gotta bleep that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We're just going with like a funny sound effect. But yeah, just uh, the, the, I, I always in my head, like, I don't have any, in my brain, I was like, I don't have anything to offer somebody to be like, hey, like, let's converse more. Ah, so it's almost great. like a bargaining chip to be like, got this. 
we can talk or you can tell me to fuck off. I don't care. But like <laughs> most of the time, most people are pretty like, yeah, let's fucking do that. Like the coffee's real good. Yeah, yeah. coffee's cool. Talking's yeah. cool. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, and like some of the people that we want to talk to are on like very public forum and like high level people. So like they obviously I'm sure would have something to say, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some man. knowledge to share. Something to share or even, some, or even as a way in something to promote. Yeah, I got a book. Yeah. Come on, bro. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the thing too. Video, like, come on. It's like <laughs> shit, that's the thing. we've had identity issues with like promotion and stuff. But, like, yeah, the what it takes for someone to promote themselves. Like, some people are better at it than others, but like, mm-hmm. just knowing what it takes to like promote something you're doing is fucking hard. It's difficult. Yeah. Um. Oh. And especially to have organic reach with it now. So like, uh, yeah. you put up a book on Instagram. Your friends might see it. They won't buy it. Someone out there would see it. Probably not gonna buy it. Yeah. Um, and you get that going. Right. Yeah. But then you get people talking about it on the ground floor. Your friends are talking about it. They've read it. They this. You you yeah. send it to people. You've yeah. done this. It's like more of like that groundwork stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, on like the ground level too. No. Nope. Um, sort of tossing it out there and then letting it. And yeah. Letting it go. Yeah. Yeah. But. Again, like just we found a nice middle ground where we don't have to answer to people to do anything like that. We don't have to. We don't have to like we'll play by our own rules. Yeah, which I think it's, goes well with who we are. As well, people. Yeah, like we're very much always have always played by our own rules. Yeah, yeah. Whether we're in a rule set where you can do that or not, <laughs> you gotta end up doing it anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what. I wouldn't like that's the thing. I wouldn't classify myself as like a rule breaker, or whatever. Like I'm just no, doing just, my fucking thing. thing. <laughs> yeah. I've caught like people have always run into that with me. As I've always sort of, on one respect, I've always broken every societal rule you can break. But I'm like, I always try to explain to people. It's not that I'm breaking those rules. I'm just following a different set. Like yeah. I don't follow those. I have my own, and I have my own thing. And having a kid is very funny because. um you start to realize like where you get that from. Mm-hmm. Uh, I come from a family that just kind of, as people, we've always done our own thing. Yeah. And we've always sort of followed our own set of rules, even though they don't even match up at all with like sort of general society thing. And now like, I see that like, oh, I got that from my mom. I got that from my godparents. I got that, you know, and sort of, and then I see like what my kid does that she gets from me. Mm-hmm. And I'm kind of live action explaining to her how this works. Yeah. Like, you know, she's like, oh, okay, that's cool. Because she can just kind of do her thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, well, that's, yeah, I see why. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, weird. yeah. I mean, that's just, uh, that's self reliance. It's a choice, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's a choice yeah. to, and it's not like a negative choice. Everyone wants to make it seem so yeah. hard. Yeah. Right. Oh, I'm bucking the system and it's such uh, tragic. And it, yeah, it's like, they're it's like, you're not lonely. It's like that's sort of the point, though. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on who I am, like I'm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not that I'm lonely, bad. It's that I'm unbothered by like stuff I don't want to be bugged by. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I don't have to mess with it. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And that's what I'm talking about when we say like we live under rocks and shit like that. Mm-hmm. We do that by choice. It's not like, like we're fucking yeah. like suppressed by somebody doing it. Like no, it's not like we're in some sort of you know we're in prison. Or, yeah. Yeah. You know, just you have a choice of what you consume. In terms mm-hmm. of what you read, just, what you whatever, like it's a very conscious, deliberate choice. Yeah, and you don't, you don't kind of don't let that in. Yeah. And yeah, well, just doing this like makes me realize that. Yeah, because like I'm like I, w- I want to say something that would that someone would listen to and be like, ah, oh, fuck that bullshit, yeah. or like just not even you know register in their brain. Yeah. Whereas like TV shows on in the fucking background, it's just noise. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. This is like mindful engagement a little bit. A little bit. A little mm-hmm. bit. As, as, as it can be right now. Yeah, as mindful as we can be. Yeah. Now, how are you feeling with the green tea? Caffeinated. We're, we're ramping up just yeah. a little, I feel it's it. Good. But I feel like good. I'm not like jittery. Mm-hmm. Mm, it's, it's nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Coffee sometimes I'll get like jittery and I'll get like a little sweat going on. Get a little, get a little much. Yeah. Don't like the sweat. Yeah. I kind of, <laughs> I kind of OD'd the other day on um, some cold press. Yeah. Oh, and dude, like it's... didn't sleep well. That um, shit is the crack of God. It's just like the fucking concentrate just gets you. Like just <laughs> yeah, I have a little splash. Thank you. Cold brew and nitro, dude. Like that shit will sneak up on you. Oh yeah, yeah. But it's coming. It'll be <clears throat> warm enough again to justify such beautiful things. Mm-hmm. Mm. Be sure to read your tea leaves at the end, my friend. Yep. Uh, tell your future. 
we see. Mm-hmm. I was listening to an interesting podcast like this guy talking about like synchronicity and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and like the first, I get the tarot, the tarot deck. Like I don't know anything about tarot cards, tarot deck or anything. Yeah, they're cool. The first deck or the first card of the deck, I guess, is like the fool, the juggling fool walking off the cliff with the spotted dog walking next to him or something like that. Like that's the first thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like he's like, yeah, man, I was selling juggling clubs. I left home, and then this little white dog like followed me around for five years, and then just disappeared. And like, <laughs> and I went and got my my stuff read, and like that was the first fucking tarot deck or the first tarot card. And they were like, I was like, yeah, like some of it. Like, what is? Ever tell you about the one time I had a tarot card reading? <laughs> no. I was in high school. I was in the library at the time actually, and a friend of mine was trying to learn how to do it. She's like, let me let me do let me do your tarot. Shuffles the deck and does all that thing. It starts laying out cards, and I can't remember. I remember one of the cards was death, and every other card had a sword in it. <laughs> every card was death and a bunch of swords. And she was like, I don't know what the fuck this means, man. I was like, I'm like, it means I'm awesome. Yeah. Uh, like, I was like 16, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I like it. <laughs> this is good. But yeah, the one time I had it read, death and a bunch of swords. <laughs> so... Whatever that means, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That's funny. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I, I almost don't. Like, I, it's interesting. Like, at the very least, it's interesting. Uh, and I would go and do it. But, it's a, a, I don't want to pay money for it, too. You're afraid to get too deep. You yeah, believe exactly. It. Three, two, I'm like, I don't want to fucking know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to know right now. If it's going to be a synchronicity thing, I'll let it play out. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to like know about it. <laughs> yeah, I see enough of it coming. I don't need cards to tell me. Yeah, it's like, you can <laughs> smell it. Like, you know when there's coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can tell what's gonna happen. Um, so it's all good. <laughs> but nonetheless, interesting. Like mm-hmm. it, it's intriguing to be like, well, is there some grand fucking scheme behind all this or whatever? Like, well, you know, a certain amount there is a pattern exerting itself on everything. Yep. I mean, but. What is the nature of this pattern? Does it actually matter? Yeah. Are we all falling into it? I mean, we have to be. We're rotating around the sun. The sun's rotating around something else. Mm-hmm. So it's certain there's a rhythm yep. of some sort. But, no. What is it? Who knows? I don't know, man. <laughs> That's what we're all after, I guess. What the yeah. fuck's going on? <laughs> uh, for me, I'm comfortable not knowing. I don't, need yeah. any, I don't need an answer. I'm okay with not being able to comprehend something. I'll take it to as far as I can, and that may be not as far as some people, or maybe farther than others, but I don't need an answer. I'm almost cool so. with just, like, knowing that this isn't it, like, just this part isn't it, you know? Like, even if they're like, yep, there's a bunch of other shit, like, cool, there's a bunch of other oh, shit, well, I'm I, doing this. I, I, <laughs> I kind of take the idea of, if this is it, it's it. If it's not, it's not. I will go ahead and say that it's not, because that's a win-win situation, mm-hmm. you know? Because then if it is, yay, if it's not, hey, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. it's all good, Yeah. You know? A lot of that, yeah. I don't know, it's just interesting to, like, uh, I'm not much into, like, chance or fate type type of things like that, but, like... I'm not, but I, I'm a firm believer in dumb luck. Yeah. Dumb luck has gotten me a lot of places, but if luck is just opportunity meets preparation, and I'm a dumbass, that means I trip first. Cool. Uh, I'm probably, <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know, life's weird like that. Mm-hmm. So this is what a, a messed up training day will do to your head. You go in feeling bad and you train anyway and have a good day. Mm-hmm. This is what happens in your brain. Yeah. If anyone's missing the connection. So like <laughs> even, yeah, you have a bad day. That's the lowest point in the valley before you spark up and fucking, yeah. you know. It's just sort of, you swim in there. And, yeah. yeah. It's like that, that, you know, before they shoot an arrow, they draw it back for blah. Mm-hmm. Like, duh. Yeah. It's called physics. Yeah. Uh, Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. All right. We have a pee. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh, what we at? What we at? Oh, we're about done. Yeah. Let's wrap it up. All right. We're good, man. That was fun. That was quick That's day. That was a good one. Yeah. Um, can yeah. I think of all the other stuff? Anything to plug? No. Well, what were your thoughts on the green tea? Green tea is phenomenal. This was nice. It's this light. Was a great one. This um, was, yeah. We may not have brewed it long enough as well, but I liked it. Yeah. I liked it. It was phenomenal. subtle. We had two cups, one with lemon, one without. Both were delicious. I'm into it, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're gonna. Thank you, Neo. Appreciate you, Neo. I think uh, once a month we're gonna have a Keep Your Tea regular episode. Yeah, for sure. So more to come, folks. Don't worry about it. 
Have right. a phenomenal Friday. Yes. As always. Keep your coffee regular, man. Peace in. Mm-hmm.